Hey, good morning, Nick. This will be a quick demo video for you for two of your sabers. You have uh, the Jawas Junkyard Red Mistress and the Core Banff Rev and Light Side. We're going to go over the Red Mistress first because it is a bit of a unique setup and I want to spend some time talking about it. All right. Um, it's a one button setup, so your one switch is right here. All right, um, I was able to get the pummel lit, although even though uh, the switch is made out of the same material, because I have the tactile switch right underneath where this plunges, um, I wasn't able to get very good light out of this. All right, so I went ahead and I turned off those LEDs because they weren't doing anything. Uh, to get your chassis out, you wanna do a few things. You wanna first take the emitter off. All right, so the emitter screws all the way off. You're going to need to get past this claw piece and I'll explain to you why I'm trying to take it off without dropping it. We'll take off the, uh, take off the emitter piece and then we'll take off the pummel as well. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and unscrew the pummel here and take that off. You'll see your chassis right here. Just kind of very carefully, uh, before you push it out, you've got a cutout right here where I've got the, um, the wiring, for this NeoPixel accent strip, or this NeoPixel accent rather, running straight to the board. You can see it here, but that cut out in your chassis. You wanna make sure that that is lined up perfectly with your switch before you put your finger in the emitter side and just kind of push it out a little bit. So if you don't line it up, it won't pop out properly, but it does take a little bit of a push to get it out, just like that. Um, let's look in here. If you can see that, it's a solid tube in there. Uh, there's really no place for a chassis retention screw. There's nothing in there to clock the chassis properly. Um, if, you, if I show you this side, which is the side of, of the switch right here, you can barely, if you look up top there, you can barely see that switch right there. When you, like when I push it down, you can see it popping in, right? Um, one thing that's not picking up on camera is that it barely sticks into the, uh, it, the inner diameter of this tube when it's not engaged all right and that is kind of what i use to clock the chassis so i did use a shadow foil props uh, pcb here for the switch which has leds on both sides of the switch but the problem was because that plunger is resting right on top of that tactile switch it wasn't giving the actual switch on the saber very much shine through at all i actually wasn't giving it any shine through at all um, but what I was able to do is light up the pummel very well, which is something that you and I spoke about. So this NeoPixel accent, which you'll see here in a second lit up when it's in here, it lights up this piece very well. All right. Um, you've got a removable battery set up here. So spring side for the negative side of your battery. Uh, your board here is at an angle. So you can pop that SD card out if you like. Uh, the board is glued into the shelf, though. You don't need to take it off. You can get it with an angled USB or uh, like an angled micro USB data cable or a straight one. Either one works, so you don't need to move the board there. All right, when you're flipping it over here, you get your kill switch right on the side of the board. Uh, this is running a 24 millimeter Smuggler's Outpost speaker. It's the largest speaker that would fit into the Sabre. And then of course I made that cap to go on front of the Sabre or on front of the speaker rather that, that holds that NeoPixel accent, all right. How do we clock the chassis? Very good question. I'm glad you asked. So <laughs> let's put a let's put a battery in here first. I got all the sound fonts on both of the sabers that you sent me. You sent me a uh, USB stick. Um, snap that battery in there so it snaps in there nice and tough. You sent me a USB stick that had certain fonts for this saber and certain fonts for the other one, um, and and a particular order. So they're all on there on each saber. There's a copy of the config file that I made for each saber on their respective SD cards. All right, but when you put that battery in there, it snaps in there nice and tough. You can come over here and you can flip the kill switch. Okay, um, we're gonna turn it off for a second. Something that you may not be able to see very well on camera, but I'm gonna try to show it. Starting right here at the back of the battery, this entire speaker section, it is uh, a, a bit of a larger diameter than the rest of the chassis. And that is because it's meant to be a press fit if I get my tweezers so that we can talk about this, 
and I focus in on this guy. So basically from here all the way to here, it's a slightly larger diameter. It's 1.03 to be exact, and the, the actual chassis is 1.02 to fit in the hilt. But the reason I made this a larger diameter is so that it would be a bit of a press fit at the very end going into the saber. Now, if you look again, the, the diameter change starts right here at the tip of the tweezers, right? But then you'll see this ring right here in the chassis, and it goes all the way around, all right? That is your indication of how far to push it into the saber and then stop it there. Um, when you do that and you line it up with that ring, it's kind of a press fit into the saber. It makes sure that the uh, tactile switch right here is right underneath the plunger so it works properly. All right, so we're going to take this and turn it back on. You're going to take your switch and line, line it up with your plunger switch here, but I'll show you another way to line that up. Right when you get to the point where you're going to have to press fit it in, you're going to get about that far. All right, we haven't reached that line yet. But again, you're going to want to make sure that cutout is in perfect alignment with that switch. So you just look at it like this and kind of like eye it. <laughs> so, And then push it in. All right, push it into that line. And I'm going to show you that here in a second. Let me get it, uh, let me get it perfect. You can go ahead and give it a test push like I just did to make sure it was aligned. But if you look now, I stopped that line right there where the threads are at. And now it's a nice tight press fit in there and it's not going anywhere. And that was the best way that I could see how to put a chassis in here and get it to stay in place. Um, these, can be, these types of sabers can be very challenging when... Um, it's basically a straight tube and you have to do a chassis and there's a plunger system so you got to make sure that works um, and I didn't want to degrade the outside of the saber at all by drilling and tapping any kind of set screw all right because that would have taken away from the look of the saber so I do have these LEDs on the timer after a certain amount of time that's going to time out but once you get that in you can come over here and you can screw the emitter on like I just did and then you can come over here and you can carefully put the pummel on as well so we're going to go ahead and screw the pummel on. Just take your time, screw it down all the way tight. You'll notice, um, one, it's going to be tight because it won't go any further. But then, two, uh, these greeblies all kind of line up at the seam. So now you got your LEDs fired up. You can see your pummel all lit up here. I did keep it on pulsing just because I thought it was kind of cool. So it's a, it's a more of a a heartbeat when it's off heartbeat when it's off and then a pulsing when it's on all right now to turn the saber off since it's a one button setup you just go ahead and you hold down on the switch and that turns the saber off all right and it is made for uh, it takes a one inch diameter blade the, uh, the inner diameter of this saber is actually 1.02, so it fits a blade very nice. I'm just going to hold it in for now. You do have a blade retention screw located right in that hole right there, and that's what you would lock down. Uh, my particular um, Allen key for that size grub screw is a little stripped because it's old and I need to buy a new set. So it doesn't do a good job of holding a blade. Or tightening down a set screw so I'll just hold the blade for now and show you that it fires up blaster bolt deflex is just uh, tapping on the switch all right if you want blade lock up you can do a double tap and then on the second one hold it down hopefully you can hear that okay and then we'll just hold it to turn it off and if you want a uh, player soundtrack, because each of your fonts have one, do a double tap. All right, and then do another double tap to turn it off. To switch sound fonts on a one button setup, you do a long press when the saber's off. General Crow, you're being relieved of duty. So we'll just cycle through these real quick.
I believe this one has four. You ever hear the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise? Great mother. So this is a, a this is a bit of a different blade. You'll see it better on a full length blade, but I gave you a green smoky blade to kind of mimic the show. All right. General Grievous, you're shorter than I expected. Forearm general. All right. So we're back to the beginning. So I'll go ahead and I'll take that blade out. Uh, just put it off to the side and we'll break this back down. So now when breaking it back down, we'll do exactly what we did at the beginning of the video. We'll come over here, take our emitter off, take the pummel off, make sure that our cutout there where the wires are for that NeoPixel accent is lined up with the switch and then come over here with your finger don't press on the pins there's plenty of room to press on the sides of the chassis you just come over here and press what press on the chassis you might want to do it over a desk pop it out like that and then um, we can turn it on from here right and then flip it off with the kill switch which is located right here on the side of the board and it kills power like it should um, and you can pop out the battery with your finger just like that so that is basically the Red Mistress. I know there's a lot to that, um, trying to get over how to line up, you know, that tactile switch with this plunger switch and not having any type of uh, chassis retention tool. All right, so I'm gonna line that up one more time real quick. Good to go there, put the pommel on and the emitter and then set this off to the side and we can go over the Revan. All right, put the emitter on right here. Very interesting saber. All right, so that is your red mistress. We'll put that off to the side and we'll go over your Revan, which is a pretty, this is a pretty simple standard setup. All right, so it is a two button setup. So that big red switch right here, you focus on that and not my face. That's your power. Back here is your auxiliary. Um, how to get to your chassis is you just want to unscrew your pummel. We're going to talk about this pummel here in a second. All right, we'll take that off. Slide your chassis right out. But before we go over the chassis, uh, your pummel, when you get it, you might hear that. It sounds a little loose, right? It, it is this guy right here. You can screw it all the way in until it's tight. You could take it off if you like. It may come a little bit loose in shipping. I left it loose so that I would remember to explain it. Um, that's just so you can't see the sound venting on the inside. Or if you want it to sound louder, you can take this completely off and completely open up that venting. Um, but it does have a spacer in here that I glued to the pommel that stays on. All right. And then this is your chassis. So this one is running a bigger speaker. This has a 28 millimeter Smuggles Outpost Elite. Uh, it does have a removable battery setup, so same with the spring side for the negative side of your battery. Your board, although straight, it's the same idea. Still access to your SD card and your micro USB, but then this one does need a 90 degree data cable. All right, so this is the one I always use. If you need a link to it, let me know. But it looks just like this, and I make it to where just enough room to fit in there and plug into the board, although I'm not focusing in on it very, very good. You can see how there's enough room there, hopefully. Bam, bam, bam. All right, so, bam, bam. That's how you do that. Now, the kill switch on this guy is located right in front of the board, which is typically what I like to do right there. All right, so let's, and then your tactile switch is over here. Um, I did forget to mention each of these is running um, CCS V4 lit NeoPix a, a blade connector here. All right, so let's throw a battery in this guy too. Although the sticker is off on the, this battery, this is my test battery. This is a Keep Power 18650. Um, I always do suggest taking the stickers off. All right, but that snaps in there nice and tough. We can come over here and flip power. The kill you switch. Are the one who to be the Dark Lord. Now, if I show you 
you may or may not be able to see it. If you look up top there in the back, you can see those plungers sticking into the ID of the blade or the inner diameter of the, of the saber. That's why you've got that channel right there. And that's kind of what these plungers are what clocks the chassis and keeps it in place. So just line up your two switches with those two plungers. It should go right in, no problem. It should stay in place. That spacer that I have on the pummel there pushes the chassis forward, locks it. Now you can hit power. Auxiliary over here. And this one's got twist off because the board's nice and straight and it's easy to do. If you prefer not to do twist off, you can just hold the switch. You can just tap the switch. Tap the power button, it'll turn it off. All right, so again, let's, let me um, back this set screw up a little bit. We'll throw a blade in here. This saber also takes a one inch blade. But I'll just hold it in here for now to show you. Hold the blade in, hit power. Now on a two button setup, if you ever want to change the color of a blade, you can and it will remember what color you change it to. So obviously these are all blue. If you wanted it green, we come over here and turn it on. I did have to lock the blade in for this one, but turn it on. Hold down auxiliary and hit power. You'll hear that noise. And now you can just twist the saber until you find the color. We got green right there. We'll hit power. Now when you turn it back on, you've saved that color. Just like that. All right, so we'll go ahead and take this out of here. And we'll break this back down too. Very easy to do. Just take off your pommel. Slide your chassis out. We can turn it on from here. And turn it off with a kill switch. And it kills power like it should. All right, and then take, when taking the battery out, you may need a tool. Come over here from the positive side and just kind of pop it out. And it'll come right out. All right. Um, but that is basically your Revan. Uh, both of your sabers, actually. Your Red Mistress and your Revan Light Side. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. And I can get these out in the mail to you today. Thanks, Nick.